From movie star looks killing off their chances to go full badass, to pop culture titans being told to do one after demanding they go full prosthetic, these hard nose were brought about thanks to some truly surreal reasons. I'm Gareth from WhatCulture.com and here are the 10 craziest reasons actors were rejected for movie roles. Number 10. Gillian Anderson wasn't allowed to play another detective Hannibal Of the many terrific personalities Gillian Anderson has effortlessly executed on the big and small screen in her three decades of acting brilliance, it's hard to look past the X-Files agent Dana Scully as the part she is most synonymous with when all is said and done. However, it was this notable work on the Fox show that ultimately cost her the chance of playing another mouth-watering and no less popular agent in what would become the sequel to The Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal. Despite being considered alongside the rest of the formidable stars of the time, Anderson was reportedly dropped out of contention for the 2001 one flick due to Fox placing a strange rule in her contract that stated she could not play another FBI agent whilst the X-Files was still running. That still didn't stop Anderson from finally dipping into the Hannibal pool years later though, as Bedelia de Maurier in the TV show adaptation of Hannibal. So have that, Foxy. Number 9. Michael Jackson wanted a prosthetic Jar Jar, The Phantom Menace Perhaps the most famous role Michael Jackson was ever attached to was one that he ultimately didn't actually get the honor of making his own. Long before Ahmed Best had gone on to unfairly feel the brunt of the backlash sent George Lucas's first prequel film's way in 1999, the king of pop was eyeing up the chance to play the now infamous Jar Jar Binks. However, in a move that understandably didn't go down very well with the CGI-obsessed overlord of all things Star Wars, Jackson was hell-bent on strutting his Gungan stuff in full prosthetics, similarly to how he had in the Thriller music video. Lucas was reportedly having none of it telling Best that Jackson's need to go practical wasn't gonna fly, and that Best would instead be going full CGI for the role. All in all, this practically-minded and super-famous Star Wars megafan was told to be dead if he didn't want to play CGI ball with Lucas. Number 8. Robin Williams is too American for Hogwarts Harry Potter For a time, it felt as though any producer on planet Earth would have jumped at the chance to throw all-round acting legend Robin Williams into one of their features. With the star being as comfortable in a crowd-pleasing comedy escapade, as he was holding down an Oscar-baiting slice of drama. Yet when it came to one particularly exciting movie franchise, Williams was pretty low on the list of potential candidates for one rather frustrating reason. When putting together the truly mesmerizing collection of acting sensations who filled out the wizarding world of Harry Potter, the casting directors and director Chris Columbus only really had one golden rule that could not be broken. Everyone had to be British. Now sure, this undoubtedly gave the series an authentically British feel, which is most definitely what you sign up for when locking into the Potterverse for a few hours. But seeing the late Williams nail it as Hagrid or Remus Lupin, the two roles he had his eyes on would have absolutely justified this one bending of the rules. Thankfully, Robbie Coltrane and David Thewlis both more than smashed it in their respective roles. So this revelation only stings a little bit upon a revisit. Number 7. Robert Redford had never struck out with a girl, the graduate of the truly laughable reasons an actor has ever been thrown out of the running for an eventually iconic role. Mike Nichols' justification for not handing the reins over to Robert Redford for The Graduate ranks as perhaps the most unintentionally flattering. The director simply felt he lacked one vital quality that was needed to play the underdog role. In short, he wasn't exactly unlucky when it came to women in his life. As the director reportedly posed to Redford, have you ever struck out with a girl? Redford, baffled by the query, then was said to have replied by asking, what do you mean? And that was enough to confirm to Nichols that Redford most definitely had not walked in the same shoes as Braddock. This eventually opened the door for Dustin Hoffman to step into those shoes of the now well-known graduate, starting a career which would see him join Redford as one of the real heavyweights of the industry. Number 6. The author thinks Johnny Depp is a lightweight actor American Psycho Before we were gifted one of the most captivating and unsettling turns ever committed to the big screen in Christian Bale's mesmerizing Patrick Bateman, the movie adaptation of American Psycho hit a number of pre-production speed bumps. Before Mary Harron would be brought on, let go, and eventually called back in later down the line, Stuart Gordon of Reanimator fame fancied a stab at Brett Easton Ellis's novel, eyeing up Johnny Depp for the part of Bateman. However, the author instantly dismissed the idea of Gordon helming the picture with Depp in the 
lead, aiming particularly harsh critique at the eventual Captain Jack. As Gordon remembered around the time, what really infuriated me was that he also put down Johnny Depp, calling him a lightweight actor who was too old to play the part. Classing the star who just captivated the globe in Tim Burton's Edward Scissorhands as lightweight seems like a bit of a harsh stretch, it has to be said. But Easton Ellis's negativity towards both the director and his star can't have helped either bloke's cause in pursuing the hot property, with Gordon being passed up on in favor of David Cronenberg before Harren stepped up to the plate. Number 5. O.J. Simpson is too pleasant to be a Terminator The Terminator It may be difficult to even imagine a world where Arnold Schwarzenegger didn't instantly immortalize himself as the formidable T-800 in James Cameron's The Terminator. But there was actually a time when the studio had their eyes on another sizable star for said game-changing role, feeling that Arnie was a better fit for Kyle Reese early on. Orion Pictures originally pitched to have O.J. Simpson chase Linda Hamilton around for two hours as the murderous robotic presence. However, the director quickly squashed this proposal due to feeling that, at the time, Simpson was seen as this likable, goofy, kind of innocent guy. The horrifying infamous real-life events involving Simpson's ex-wife and a restaurant waiter being murdered, with Simpson being found not guilty despite many still feeling he committed said savage acts, would later make Cameron's reasoning seem a little mind-blowing in hindsight. To put it mildly. Number 4. Eddie Redmayne Can't Channel the Dark Side The Force Awakens Even Academy Award-winning thespians can struggle to conjure up the qualities needed to secure an ominous role in one of the biggest franchises in filmmaking history, proving that some actors just aren't built to channel the dark side. This was depressingly the case for Fantastic Beast star Eddie Redmayne. When reading for the role of Kylo Ren in what would later become The Force Awakens, the Brit has admitted that he did his best Darth Vader <sighs> voice during the audition. However, it soon became apparent that his failed attempts at being menacing weren't doing it for casting director Nina Gold. In what must have been a deeply soul-crushing exchange, Gold would then ask the superstar performer after around 10 takes, you got anything else? He did not, and quickly wandered out of the room with his anything but force-sensitive tail between his legs. Number 3. Julianne Moore Wanted a Fat Suit Can You Ever Forgive Me? In another case of a star's need to fully submerge themselves in the world of prosthetics, both figuratively and literally, ultimately costing them the gig. Here's that time Julianne Moore was given the boot from Can You Ever Forgive Me six days before the film's shoot got underway, before Melissa McCarthy would step in to take over the part of Lee Israel, earning herself a cool Oscar nod in the process. Moore was very much set to star in the flick. However, as Richard E. Grant would later confirm, it was Moore's need to cover herself in prosthetics that ultimately cost her a potential Academy Awards nod. Grant told Advertising Week Europe, Julianne Moore wanted to wear a fat suit and a false nose to play Lee Israel, and director-turned-screenwriter on the flick Nicole Holofsener said you're not going to do that. It's fairly easy to see where Holofsener was coming from. Who knew a fat suit and fake nose could prove to be such a sticking point, eh? Number 2. Nicole Kidman Wasn't Talented Enough – Notting Hill How anyone could arrive at the conclusion that Nicole Kidman was simply not talented enough for any part in question would likely benefit from having their head banged into a rather sturdy wall for a few minutes. But believe it or not, this was precisely the scenario the Australian powerhouse found herself in when trying to secure a spot in 1999's iconic rom-com Notting Hill. Kidman revealed as much during a conversation alongside Grant with Mary Claire in 2020. As Kidman explained, I really wanted the role that Julia Roberts played in Notting Hill, but I wasn't well known enough and I wasn't talented enough. Now the star has something of a point in terms of not being as big a household name as Julia Roberts at that point, but to suggest that her chops weren't up to scratch for the role is borderline insane, with Kidman already earning a Golden Globe for her work in To Die For just a few years earlier, picking up her first Oscar nod a few years later for her turn in the magnificent Moulin Rouge. Number 1. Scarlett Johansson is Too Sexy – Girl with the Dragon Tattoo As it turns out, there is apparently such a thing as being too sexy to star in a Hollywood feature, girl figure. When trying to land on who would be handed the honor of playing the titular girl with the dragon tattoo in the film of the same title, David Fincher definitely definitely had a few impressive candidates on his shortlist. Among the many amazing people the director of Seven, Fight Club, Zodiac and The Social Network saw for the part of computer hacker Lizbeth Salendorf was one Scarlett Johansson. And while Fincher claimed that the eventual Avenger produced a great audition, he couldn't escape the fact that you can't wait for her to take her clothes off, clearly not being what he had in mind for Salander. 
The director instead landed on the outstanding Rooney Mara for the deeply intense role of a survivor of horrific emotional and sexual abuse. In the end, there's no questioning that Mara puts her everything into becoming an authentic version of the compelling Salander, with Fincher later affectionately admitting, Oh man, she's a weirdo, she's a great weirdo, and it's hard to argue with that.